All right, so the idea of black body radiation, it sounds fancy, but really it's probably something that all of us have uh, experienced, which is just that hot objects glow. So if I turn on my stovetop, then the coil in my electric stovetop starts to glow red at, as it starts to warm up, even though at normal times, it's more of a black color. And as I heat, crank up the heat on the stovetop, then it progresses glowing through a dull red, through a brighter red to orange, and then a bright yellow, right? And if I could heat it up even higher than that, even hotter than that, then it would glow at different colors again. So this idea that hot objects glow and that the color of the glow depends on the temperature, that is the core of black body radiation. That is the main idea. And so everything that we'll talk about is how we actually uh, put numbers and physical rules to that idea to make it useful to us. So um, even though we only see a single color from the uh, color of your stovetop, it's actually the case that black bodies produce a spectrum. And by black body, it just means that like all of the light that hits that, that object is absorbed. So it's not affected by the light of objects around it. And this is different than what we think of uh, as you know, kind of regular objects. So if I have like an apple and an orange, then the reason that they look orange and red is because there's white light from um, the room around me hitting these objects and each of them reflects a different color. The orange obviously reflects the orange light and it absorbs all of the other colors. Um, meanwhile, the apple reflects red light and it absorbs all the other colors. So um, these objects are dominated by the, you know, their appearance is dominated by the light that they reflect, not the light that they're actually giving off. And it's the same for, uh, you know, you and me. Uh, when I see your faces, uh, I'm seeing the different colors that are reflecting off of you. I'm not seeing the radiation that you are actually producing, even though you are producing radiation in the infrared range. And that's just because we don't see infrared. Um, so. That's what it means to be a black body is that the, the light that you see from the black body uh, is only due to the light that it is inherently giving off due to its temperature. And uh, by spectrum, what I mean when I say spectrum is a collection of different uh, wavelengths of light. And these can actually be separated by using things like, for example, a prism to separate out different colors of visible light. Um, and in modern times, uh, diffraction gratings are more common. If you've ever looked at the back of a CD or a DVD, you might notice that it kind of reflects rainbow colors back to you. That's a, another example of an instrument that's used to separate colors of light, a diffraction grating. And um, a spectrum is characterized by how much light there is in each wavelength range. So to quantify the spectrum of light that a black body produces, we make a graph of intensity versus wavelength. So we plot wavelength on our x-axis uh, from small to long wavelength. So from high energy to low energy, that's my convention. You can plot it with respect to frequency if you want, but I think in terms of wavelength. And then when we plot, plot the spectrum, we just say how much of each color is there um, in each bucket. And the color of the object we see then depends on the amount of light that it gives off at each wavelength. So if there's an object that appears red, then it puts off a lot more intensity, a lot more total amount of light in the red uh, portion of the visible range than it does in the blue portion of the visible range. And vice versa, if there is an object like a star that appears blue, then it's putting off more intensity of light in the blue than it is in the red. And to come back to the question that was asked earlier about why, for example, smoke appears white, that's because if there's an equal intensity at all different visible wavelength ranges, uh, then that uh, light appears white. So that's why I say that there's you know, white light coming off of the light sources in this room uh, is because there's uh, the body that's producing that light is hot enough that it's appear uh, uh, producing some of all of those colors. Okay. So um, here are some examples of black body spectra, which I'll often call a black body curve. Um, again, this is intensity versus wavelength. Now the wavelength is measured in nanometers on this scale. And each of these curves is labeled by its temperature in Kelvin. So that's the temperature of the object producing that black body spectrum. 
And I just want to ask you a question in the chat. Uh, just what do you notice about these different curves? All right, lots of excellent observations here. So uh, one of the first things that we can notice uh, is that there's, you know, several different, um, I guess, attributes of the spectrum that we can measure and identify. One of those is how tall is this peak? So how tall is the tallest point on the curve? Um, so what is the intensity of the peak? And then the other thing we can notice about this peak point is what wavelength does that peak occur at? And then um, how does the shape of the curve seem to change at different temperatures? So how does kind of the skinny, or is it more skinny or more wide um, at different temperatures? And what we notice is that for the highest temperature object, the peak occurs at the shortest wavelength and it, it also occurs at the highest intensity. And then as we get cooler and cooler, the object's peaks shift to higher wavelengths, longer wavelengths, and they also go to lower and lower intensities. And yes, also the curves appear to broaden uh, out as we go cooler and cooler. So those are all good things to notice. And the two things that we generally um, use from a black body curve are the wavelength of the peak and the intensity of the peak. So in general, I will just call these peak intensity and peak wavelength. With when I say peak, I mean the tallest point on the graph. Uh, 